Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Part two of how to properly perform a deadlift. Um, so w- this is going to take off from part one. If you haven't watched part one yet, go ahead and click on the link to watch that. That'll take care of the setup in terms of the feet and hands. Um, this video is going to be shot from the side, and, and we are going to actually go through the lifting process and talk some angles. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, move this ahead. So again, you have to watch part one to understand this setup to how my legs and arms are set up. You're not going to be able to see it from this angle. What I do want to draw is some angles and some relationships between the shoulder, the hips, and the knees. This is going to be the proper shape um, of the, the deadlift as you're setting up. It's going to be very similar to a greater than, less than sign. Okay, greater than, less than sign. And what we're looking for is as you progress throughout the movement, this, you know, these three points should never outdo one another. And what I mean by that is your hips should never be higher than your shoulders. You know, your knees shouldn't be even with your hips. Um, those are very, very separate, distinct angles, and they should remain at the same height levels throughout. Uh, the deadlift is going to lead, what I like to coach, is with the shoulders up and then bringing the hips through. Those are really my two focus points. doesn't even matter the weight. Uh, on here, we have 275, uh, just 275. It's the same. It should look the same, whether that's 135, 225, 275. We're going to want to make sure we see these angles. So we're going to go ahead and progress this video a little bit. And as you see here, even as this thing progresses, my hips never shoot straight up. One of the most common errors that I see, problematic areas, is when someone begins the movement, if it's, especially if it's heavy weight, first thing that happens is these hips shoot straight up. You're focusing on hip drive only. You're really trying to bring these hips forward, and these actually end up going straight up. They become even with the shoulders. And it puts a lot of flexion, obviously, on the uh, lower back. We want this to be a posterior movement. So hamstrings, hips, and lower back all involved. Uh, That is probably the most common error that I do see with the deadlift. Uh, The other one, actually, I didn't finish too too great on this one here, as we see here. I'm I'm not a big fan of this super tense posture that I seem to have here. Um... So this could have been done better. Sometimes, again, two people's weight is too far back on their heels this way. I always teach complete foot. I want to feel my entire foot on the ground. It's going to give me the most power um, from the floor up through the up through the knees, up through the hips, up through the upper body. But all in all here. We're just going to play this out here at the end. Take note. All right, all those angles look the same. The one thing I would have you know, too, is as you set this bar down, I, I'm a big advocate of a controlled release. Okay, so I don't want you dropping this bar slowly down. I don't want, I don't want you, you know, trying to fully control this thing all the way down, especially as, as your weight increases. And you're also not just going to flop this thing. I know a lot of people will just drop this weight and bounce it off the floor. I'm going to rewind this a little bit here. If you watch me um, as I release, you could tell I keep my hands... Um, Obviously on the bar, and by that, but you could tell my I'm relaxing as I do it. Ready? There, even there, right? So that's part one and part two. That is the complete form from the Ramsley Fitness family about how to safely and properly execute the traditional barbell deadlift. Thank you for watching.